All right, we're going to get started here. Um, I had a request for a setup, or I should say a revised setup for the 2018 Porsche uh, here at Circuit Paul Ricard. And, of course, uh, the setup that I had for it um, was pretty old. I mean, it was, a, I don't know, it was like three or four years ago, so it was an older setup. And, of course, a lot of things have changed since then. So, um, you know, need to go through it and just kind of, kind of update, um, everything. So again, I made a few laps just to get reacclimated with the car again. Um, and actually I didn't have the old setup with me cause I've already erased it. So I just took it down from the video and we'll go over that. And as you can see, the only things that are probably pretty close are the tire pressures, even though they're they were still a little off too, even. But you know, because that's even changed. But again, a lot of things have changed since then. Um, the toe is pretty close. Electronics, of course, I had a lot of TC and a lot of ABS in it. That's changed. Um, the ABS, I haven't changed. I did take some out, but the problem with this the 2018 car. It likes to lock up the front tires a lot because, you know, the suspension's totally different on the 2018 than it is on the newer 911s on the on both the 19s and the 22 Porsche. They're totally different. Um, you know, this has got struts on it. Uh, so, with, well, the uh, newer Porsches have upper and lower control arms. So, a lot, lot different, a lot different uh, geometry and everything. So, again... Um, and of course, here you get a lot of locking up one tire. So um, I do run a little bit more ABS than nor than I would on like a newer car, but not this much. <laughs> and of course, the TC I've turned way down. Um, all this stuff here um, wasn't real bad actually, but it was still uh, pretty far off. Um, you now just a few clicks here, a few clicks there. These are pretty far off. Um, and, of course, this is way, way off here. So this is the biggest one. That's This is way off because, again, the, you know, the way that the whole physics was different than when I did this setup and compared to what it is now. So, again, a lot different here with the whole balance of the car and wing and everything else. So, again, I'm trying to do a good, just a good, solid race setup for the car. Um and something that is, you know, good all around, let's just say. I mean, you can use it for a lot of different a lot of different weather conditions and just a good around setup. So that's what we got. Um, and I've been, like I said, made a few laps in this. Um, not that great a laps, obviously. Speed's a lot more higher than it was then. So the speed here is a lot higher than it was uh, because, like I said, the physics are completely different. So, again, that makes that right-hand turn even more hairy. And you got to kind of tiptoe through there. So, there's a lot of things that I don't like. So, again, a lot of a lot of massive changes here. Um, another thing, the front end likes to hit the ground on the brakes hard if you have it too low. So, really, on the, on the 18 Porsche, really about 62 is probably about as low as you can go. Um, you might be able to get away with a few tracks going down to all the way down, but not too many. Um, and it's just because the front end just, just seems to bottom out so easy with this 2018 Porsche. You'll hear it hitting. So actually 62 is probably about the lowest. I think I, I've actually raised it up a notch. So again, um, that's, that's, that's the setup from the video from the last one I did, which was like three or four years ago. Um, so we'll go ahead and load this one. Um, and again, you can see lots of different things we're working on here. Um, the update, a lot of, some things are very similar to what I have on the new Porsche. And we can go over that one also too, because I've made one for the new Porsche also. Um, but again, a lot of, a lot of these are about, this is pretty similar to the new Porsche actually. Uh, this is actually pretty similar. Um, you can see the TC and all that lot different than the, the ABS uh, still a lot higher than probably the other Porsche um, this here again 
a little bit different. Pretty similar, but a little bit different. And shocks are a lot different. And you can see the here is a lot different. Um, so again, let's go make some laps. And again, we'll see if we can do any more dialing in. Um, it's, like I said, it should be... It's pretty close, but I need to still do some more testing. Um, I want to finish this up. And then, of course, we'll go over the final thing here. So let's go out and make a few laps. I haven't realized that I haven't had a a newer setup for the 2018 car. It drives actually it drives really good. Um, I'm really happy with uh, the way it drives. And actually, I'm doing like one mile an hour more at the end of the straightaway with this than I was with the other setup and the older update. So even though I got way more wing, well, that's how different the physics are. So when I had a three wing before, I was doing one mile an hour less than I'm doing now. <laughs> and I got a 10 wing. So that's how, how different, it, uh, different it is, just the physics part of it. There's some things I'm still trying to get dialed in as far as some of the uh, things I'm not really liking. So that's why I'm just trying to make a, a few more laps and see how it does. I didn't really like the, uh, this is only has TC1, it doesn't have TC1 and 2, so again, some of the TC, there's just nothing you can do about the way it reacts. the tires were okay Anybody has any questions? Go ahead. You can 
ask away or want to see something in particular or why I do this or why I do that. Tighten it up a little bit more. Mouse. There. Trying to get the dang roll bar and the diff. I've been playing with the diff, trying to get it to where I, where I want it, trying to limit the uh, TC coming in, but... So far, I've been really low on it, and that didn't really, that didn't really help either. Try that, see if that's any better. Yeah, some of these older cars, I mean, they get kind of lost. You know, nobody really, a lot of people don't pay attention to them. No, no, no love sent their way. <laughs> so, again, trying to show a little bit of love to the older car. But I mean, it's it's really in perspective. I mean, it's not as you know, it's not as fast as the newer car, but it's not supposed to be. So I mean, again, you know, you can't you know trying to get this to go as fast as the new 992 Porsche. It's, it's not going to happen. That's still a good car to drive. Taking the TC down to one to see if that helps with the uh, with it cutting in.
That's not a bad time for the 18. Sometimes you just gotta short shift it a little bit. Lost a little bit there. Stays there. Staying pretty consistent. I mean, it's about a second off, a little less than a second off the new Porsche, but. consistent so it's not like a one lap wonder I mean I'm, I'm hitting it just about every single lap there tire pressures look pretty good um Yeah, look at the tire wear. Tire wear actually looks really good. The Porsche. Probably because of where it's wearing the fronts faster than the new one does. I mean, it, it was, this is pretty close compared to the new Porsche. They say you get a little bit more front tire wear on the on this older one, I think, which is really not a bad thing because it, it's the rears wear a little fast. So again, I think this is really good. Um, it picked up really nice. Um, 
me just check this. Check Motec really quick. Let's see how far it's out. Really weird. Hmm. They're off a little bit. Oh, you can't see it, but yeah, they're it's off a little bit. Stay here. Try to get me a new mouse. This mouse is driving me crazy. Drive me nuts. Try something else. There's still, it's almost like it's in reverse. It's almost like it's, uh, doing the opposite of what it usually does so it's kind of it's kind of got me weird with the shocks so make an adjustment they do the opposite of what I'm what I'm adjusting so I'm gonna have to see how that plays out but this really works good here let's check the replay and see um see if we're getting any tire lock up. Yeah, forty-five, a forty-eight, and a forty-nine. I mean it doesn't get any more consistent than that. Yeah, it likes to lock up the inner tire front on some of these corners. See if it does it on this. Tires are fully up to temperature and pressure, so they see how bad it locks up. That's my Grillo car. Got that off a of race department. Got the livery team car to the uh, other Manti racing car. 172. That's good speed. Yeah, I saw a teeny bit of lock up there. Barely. That was okay, though. That's not that bad. That was barely any lock up. I was locking up right here earlier. Pretty good there. We'll see about up here too. Huh? Oh, 
Okay, looks looks a lot better. Yeah, it was like I said, it was locking up uh, there earlier, so that looks a lot better. Okay. All right. So it's past the first test. I'm still not sure about the shocks. I could put them back where they were, but I mean, I'm just trying to figure out why it's doing what it's doing um, on the graph. It's kind of like doing the, like I said, it's like doing the opposite of what I'm wanting it to go. So, um, but really this is a hundred times better than what the other one was. What's funny is this, like I said, this one's doing 172 with a 10 wing and the other one was did with the old setup was doing 170 with a three wing. <laughs> so it's gained two miles an hour, even though I got a lot more wing in it. But I mean, it's, it's just the way the physics are. They were totally different back then. So, um, let's do, let's test it in a race real quick. Just do a quick race. We got 10 minutes. I like doing this sometimes, especially these big tracks, because you can see how it drafts and how the car is upset by the draft, or does it pick up, you know, does it, can it draft? A lot of things like that, which, you know, you can't simulate uh, by yourself. So, you know, I don't do that at all the tracks. I just mainly do it for these, uh, the big ones. Plus, I need to do a few more laps to check the shocks again anyway. So, instead of just doing laps, um, at least I've got something to do. You guys got something to watch instead of me just doing a few laps. I'd like to check those shocks again. So, let's see what it does. See if we can get through a few laps. Let's see if the AI doesn't kill me. It's still, you know, a good car to drive. I mean, it's not like a, it's a bad car. I don't get to play with the 2018s too much. Got yeah, shift is a lot faster, it seems like, compared to the new car. Hey, Nikos. Oh, it's drafting just fine. Look at that. 170 sessings <laughs> drafting great. Man, I'm all over them. Going a little bit too fast.
Curse of AIs at 100. Aggression and everything's maxed out. Yeah, I've always liked Paul Ricard. It's always been really fun to me. Love the livery on that Porsche. Dang it. Staying consistent. So far, feels pretty good. Be anxious to see what the shocks look like after this. Too bad they got away up there.
They're flying. They're running low 54s and 54 threes and fours. Thank you. This is the 2018, this is the 991.1. Too, too hot. I got in wreck. I didn't like where I finished, but that's the first Porsche. <laughs> so, who says an AI doesn't pass you? That was a good race. Still ran my fastest time. I wish I could have kept up with the guys in the very front. Drafting here makes all the difference. That's why I wanted to make sure it would draft, and it was definitely drafting. I mean, I was, it was I was drafting really good. Oh yeah, this is 
This is a two. This is a 2018, so it's not gonna have the speed that the uh, new cars are gonna have. So, ugh. it's not. I mean, that's not gonna have it. So you, you can't race this against the 296. It's not gonna, you know, not gonna happen. So, um, I mean, it's. Matter of fact, the new Porsche, I think, does two more miles an hour faster than this. So, top speed ain't everything. It's what your lap. It's what your lap time is. So, if you if your lap time's fast, then that's all it that really matters. Um, I mean, you could have the do. A, you could you could do 180 miles an hour down the straightaway, but if you can't get through any of the corners because the car won't handle for nothing, you're you're, you're still going to get beat. Um, let's go back over the Motec again. Yeah, it's almost like it's doing it the opposite. That's really weird. Very, very weird. I'll leave these where they're at. I'll leave them where they're at. Let's look at see what their top speed. Of course, it's the um, uh, Aston Martin's gonna have crazy top speed. Lamborghinis. That the uh, first Lambo is not too bad either. He's drafting this time. Porsches. The Porsche is drafting and he's only got 173, so that's not that good, really. 
Not compared to me. It's amazing how the Lamborghinis, the original ones, flew down the straightaways, but they didn't handle that good. Now the ones, now the new ones, the Evo 2 doesn't fly down the straightaways, but it handles the, it's the opposite. And the, the motor's the same motor and everything. Same really basic car, but it's amazing how different they are. Because the Evo 2 is struggles on the straightaway compared to the, the first, la first Huracan. Of course, these guys were flying too. I think that, like I said, I think the 992 does 174, 175 down that straight, down the uh, straightaway. So that's about two to three miles an hour faster than this Porsche. But the problem with this Porsche is, it's also a lot looser. It doesn't have the grip that the that the new Porsche has as far as the rear end and things like that. So you can't run no wing in it. The thing will just, you won't be able to go around. It won't, it won't handle for nothing. That's why it, because you got, if you look behind there, you see there's like no diffuser. It doesn't hardly have a diffuse. It doesn't have nothing back there. So it all relies on the wing to keep it stuck. So if you run no wing, it's not gonna, you're gonna have literally no grip. That was the one thing was, that, that was a big negative on the 2018 Porsche. That's why he's getting he's getting passed. So let's see if we can try. Um. Got an idea. Let's see. We can make an adjustment. Let's see if we can go down a little bit just to gain a teeny bit and see if we can still keep the. There. We'll do that. Try to keep the. Uh... Try to keep the handling as. best we can and yeah, see it's, it's that right front that gets the that does the lockup stuff all right let's try it again let's see if, let's see if uh we can still get it to go around corners see if it picks up any speed Oh, come on. Punks out on me. <laughs> well, I have it here is just staying in the draft. If you can stay in the draft, you have a chance. But the problem is, is once you lose the front guys, it's, it's pretty tough. At least in a Porsche.
Golly, a Huracan went all the way out there. See if we can do any better in the speed department. I think it'd be much difference, maybe a mile an hour more. Hey, how's it going, Warren? Need to get up to them guys. Whoa. Yeah, see, I don't I don't like that. Car's too loose. Car's too loose. an idea let's try Try this and see if this does anything. Just a curiosity. Surprised the Ferrari's not up here. Or the Jaguar. Jaguar's back there. I don't think the person that wants his setup wants it for uh, online. I think he's just, I think he's probably just doing the offline, the career or something like that, probably.
I got more wing. I look at the speed. Drafting. 175. Zero traction control is not the way to go. But I do like the wing because you can get... Um, I can get more aggressive with it. Oh. So it gives me an idea. You saw it was still drafting. Let's see, you gotta make up more... You gotta be able to make up more time in the other sections. That's what's uh, really important. So let's try this and see. Another, another click of sway bar, too. I mean, Porsche is never going to be able to compete with any anybody on speed, on, you know, straightaway speeds. It's not going to happen. Actually, the new one's the best. The new Porsche is the best out of all of them, but especially these older ones. There's, there's no, there's just no way. If the car does any better, or worse, or what?
Tires look a little off, but not too bad. Man, did he jam his way in there? run my line the way I want to being defensive following me.
Wow, man, that was a... I was out of bounds? Man, I didn't think that was out of bounds. I messed that up. Trying to push too hard. Yeah, I just being defensive. They're both good. I think I ran a little better with the other other way though. Yes, it's still, uh, it's using a new tire model. Hey, John. I didn't try that just for, you know, I just trying to other things. I didn't really try tire pressure because uh, it should be the new tire model. I'm in the open. I'm in the open part. So let's see what the. Yeah, see you see see up here it says EUB1 2021 right here. So that should be the new tire model. So it's using the 21 21 track. 
model, so that's it should be using that tire model. So, um, I like you know speed wise, it's it's you know six half dozen the other. I mean, it looked like it lost a mile an hour, but I could push it harder in the corners, which I I preferably I kind of like. Because I pushed really hard in the corners and on the brakes. So, and you got to remember, I mean, this is only 15 minutes. It's, it's you know, it's, if you were in a 30 minute or 40 some, you know, a longer race, it's going to be even more precious to keep the tires under you. So that was one thing with the Huracan. I mean, and back then, 2018, you know, that car would kill the rear tires off that car. Oh, wait a minute, I got back up. That's yeah, that's yeah, one mile an hour less, maybe, maybe not even that much. Speed's not you're never gonna get this Porsche to do big speed. Never. Ain't gonna happen. Matter of fact, I ran with the old setup with a three wing. So that's hardly any wing in it at all. And and it would do 174 that's it that's about as fast as the car will go by itself at 174 so and that's with a three wing but it handled like crap i mean you couldn't go you know time wise it was awful so i mean you're sacrificing the whole rest of the track just to go fast and even then it's still not as fast as the other cars on the straightaway i mean they're still faster so it's you're not really you know you're not gaining anything I mean, again, especially this Porsche over all the other Porsches. I mean, the, two, the, the, the new Porsche does better, but still down a little bit on speed. But the old Porsche was real bad about being down on speed. So, I mean, it should, you know, again, you, you got to try to make it up in the corners and handling. Okay, let's let, let let's take a look. Okay, so let's let's look at the look at the car. So one reason is this. Okay, you have no diffuser back here. You got a couple little fins, but that that's it. It really doesn't do anything. So you don't have, you know, you don't have. A lot of downforce creating at the back compared to the other cars. Um, also, this engine I think is the 3.8 liter. It's not the 4 liter or the 4.2 that's in the current car. It's the 3.8, I'm pretty sure. So that means it, it's not as much power. And so the only thing you can do is is wing. Okay, that, that's all you can do to keep the back end of the car down. That's it. Um, now, let's compare, okay? This is the same kind of thing. The Aston Martin is the same kind of thing, okay? That was its big handicap, okay? No diffuser at all. And a big wing. And that's the only thing that kept this down was this big wing. But the big difference is you had a big old monster V12 engine in the thing that could just drag it around. And it didn't really, need, you know, and you needed the wing to help you hold this car down. But you had a lot, it still had so much power to overcome it. Where the, you know, the Porsche doesn't have that. This car does not have that big power. So you it's the same concept. You have very, very little downforce back here except this wing. That's all you have. And so you got to, you know, pick your pick your battles. I mean, you you're, you're never you're never going to win on a straightaway with this car ever no matter what you do. 
you got to try to make it up in the corners and on brakes. The only way to do that is to get the car to handle. So obviously, this is a really tough track for this car. So again, Paul Ricard Monza was never a good track for the Porsche, but you got to just, you know, you got to try to make the best with what you got. And that's what it has is good brakes and good handling. And that's what you got to try to maximize that. That's really the only thing you can do. And, you know, maybe a lot of people don't believe me, but I, I, I'm telling the truth. So, <laughs> you know, the Porsche, I mean, like I said, you could, I mean, you could run little to no wing in it and get the speed is just not going to be there. Um, which what we'll do. is we'll do it this time with this way maybe it'll, it'll call me a liar but let's let's try it let's load just to do a few laps let's load my other setup and this is i'll even do a couple little things just to help it out to update it but we'll leave I'll leave this high, so try not to spin it out. Have to leave that. I'll have to leave that really high. There. So there, there you go. Let's try this. It's got hardly any wing in it. Maybe we can do, maybe we can, it'll surprise me. Maybe it'll do better, but I don't think it will. But let's try it. It will, it'll be as about as fast as you're going to get it to go down the straightaway, that's for sure. You might be curious to see what it tops out at. We're going to have maximum velocity now. Okay, he's still getting, he's, he's still going to, he's still going to go right around me. See, 174, that's it. That, that's all. Like this car likes to be sh short shifted more than like the new the new Porsche. Well, I'm pretty sure this car had a 3.8 liter, and then when the the next the 991.2 came out, it came out with the four liter, 
and now the 992 has the 4.2 liter. So, you know, they've gone up a little bit each time. I don't, I don't think they, I don't think they can go out anymore. Yeah, this thing's definitely a handful handling. Let's run it wide. Still can't get around them. I'm on the limiter. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I was on the limiter. One, I think it hit 178 or 179, and it was bang. It started stuttering. It was on the limiter. <laughs> but that was kind of funny. They ain't got no grip to hold me into the corners. No grip to hold me in the turn. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun to drive when you have the grip. The car is fast. It's, it's got acceleration. You're going to have acceleration. As you saw in the other race, You know he could never get around me because every time we come off of any of these corners, especially the slow ones... I'd out accelerate, um, you know, I'd out accelerate them every single time. So again, you can't, you know, it's acceleration is a big, big plus to this for the, the old Porsche handling is a big plus. You got to really go after the handling because that's where the car's got it. Speed. It does not. It just, I mean, look at in the draft. I couldn't, I couldn't even pull out and I was, I was all over them and I couldn't even pull out. You just, there's nothing you can, and if I did, it would have been like hitting a brick wall of air. If I, if I would have pulled out, I, I would have lost speed. I would just would have, I would have, he would have probably pulled away. I mean, it's just, it's just, it just doesn't have it on the straightaway, no matter what you do. So that's why, um, got to maximize the strengths of the car. I mean, um, and like I said, when you look at, you know, you look at this car and you can see that, I mean, you can see there's no diffuser back there. And you look at that compared to the 991.2 and now see it's got, it's, it's got more of a diffuser. It's, it's, it's an improvement. So this car, you know, and this is, again, I love this Porsche. I've run, done a lot of races with this Porsche. Um, it's, it, it improves everywhere over the the point one. I mean, it is a better car. It is a better car, really, in every way. You know, but then you know, again, you go to the the new Porsche, and it's you know even more. You know, it's got more balance. It's got more aero. It's just got more everything. So it's just again every t every time they come out with another gen, it's another improvement and things like that. And of course, it's, well, it's hard to see it with this, but it says four point two right there on the on the trunk right there. Kind of hard to see it. You can. Yeah, see it right there. It says 4.2. But um, basically the same. That's the same size engine they had in the RSR was the 4.2. But anyway, that's the big differences. Um, each generation, it's, you know, they're, they're different from each other. And I tested this by myself when I was running another setup. And like I said, 174 was the max max speed 
it would go. And it was actually hitting that early and just sitting there. It wouldn't gain anymore. So, again, you know, to me, going 171, 172 uh, is a lot, lot better. Um, oh, wrong one. So, again, I think, uh, to be honest, I really think this is the better setup. Um, probably this right here, the one I had in the, the before. It's, it's, it gives you in between. You can go one or two more clicks. Like I had a 12. You could just go one click or another click if that's what you like for grip if you need it. But I would try to keep it between 10 and 12. That's the two. That's in that neighborhood somewhere. Uh, other than that, everything else is good. I mean, I could try more stuff, and I'm sure I could pick up some more time with it. But, I mean, this gets a really good, um, you know, base type setup. Um, let me check. Let me check MoTeC again. That's not too bad there. It's pretty good. It's close. So that's that's not bad. All right. So that's not bad. That's okay. Um And this here is good. And the tire wear was excellent. So I'm really thinking that on a longer run, it would be really good because it was staying really consistent. So again, um, you see the tire pressure 25.1 on the left front, 26. 24.6 left rear, 25.6 right rear, toes negative 2. Camber's negative 4 on the left front, negative 3.8 on the right front, caster at 9.5. Toe on the rear is a positive 0.1 with the camber at negative 3.5 on the left rear, negative 3.2 on the right rear. Electronics are 2, 4, and 8. Again, um, I go down to 1, actually. You could, I put on 2 in the beginning, but I actually run um, the race all in 1. Um, so you can, I'll leave it on 1, just leave it there, but you can put it up to 2 if you want to, but I'll just leave it on 1. I tried it on 0, but it just it just wants to spin out, so you got a really, really good throttle control for that. Um, of course, number 1 brake pad... Uh, four on the anti roll bar. Matter of fact, I had it before at three. That's what I'm gonna leave it at. I got three on the anti roll bar. Ninety five brake power. Fifty six brake bias. Um, and steering at thirteen. Springs on the left front's one hundred sixty six thousand. Right front's one hundred forty nine with a bump stop rate of nine hundred and a bump stop range of ten. And on the rear the springs one hundred sixty seven thousand on the left rear and one hundred fifty four thousand on the right rear. Bump stop rate's 500 and a bump stop range of 25. Any roll bar again, three, and diff, diff is 80. I never really was happy with the diff. I tried all the way, way down, way up. I mean, it's just really just about the same. I've just picked the happy medium. Um, shocks, 3167 on the front and 2267 on the rear. Arrow, 63 in the front, 65 in the rear with a 10 wing and a three and a three in the brake ducts. Front arrow variation is a negative 5.5. Um, no, but I'd like to. Max wing. <laughs> no, t max wing probably wouldn't work with this, but 12 was good. That last race, when I had 12, I, that was... You could probably do some more work to optimize the handling with the 12 wing, and it probably would be pretty good. It probably would be as fast, but you just got to push it really hard through the corners and things like that. Um, and brakes and but you know it'd probably be good actually if I was running a long stint I, I would probably run a 12 wing if I was running a long stint I would probably run a 12 wing and um, tweak a little bit more as far as the setup to make it handle try to handle maybe a little bit better um, and go for that 
but most of the time the 10 would probably be all right um and it'd get you through but yeah i mean still it still feels a lot more racy and grippy and everything else compared to what um it did with the with the three wing with the three wing it, it just feels like you're on ice skates you can't the car's got no grip back there at all it's, it's, it's you can't do anything um Yeah, you could, but then you lose stability too because what happens with the Porsche is um, now I would try this. You might want to go down one click on this and try it. That I would try. Um, but you don't want to go all the way soft because then what you do is you lose the stability of the car and the car starts pitching on each corner. And then what happens is you, you lose your aero balance. So when you're in, you're in these long sweeping turns, and you got and you got the car starts pitching over on one corner, you lose your arrow, and then you you get you get a understeer condition, or you get a, a different things happening, which doesn't make sense because the car is doing different things because you're losing the arrow part of holding the car down. So um, again, um, I mean. You got a lot of G's around here going around the going around that corner and I don't you know you, if you have a super soft spring it just it feels mushy the car feels like it doesn't it, it just makes it harder to drive it makes the car not go where you want it to go because it just feels loose and mushy and I mean I didn't want to do that for uh anybody as far as you know this i mean i'm sure he's racing this online probably in the career mode or something the guy that was want that asked for a uh, revised setup because i mean i'm sure he's not using this car to run online I, i'd be surprised if he is um so he's probably running a championship you know an offline thing or he's running a career mode or whatever um so you know he needs something that can uh you know run lap after lap after lap and you know softer springs usually are harder on the tires um and the porsche is hard on tires anyway so because you're trying to push it through the corners so you know you really you know and, and actually the wear is really good with this so that's one thing i liked about it is for the porsche it's actually excellent wear um compared to the other porsche um so again um make this a setup and of course, I will leave uh, a link to this setup in the description. And power card. Now, if you get an understeering issue, then you get too much spring. So if you make, if you turn the car, if you turn the car and the spring and the car just wants to go straight, it doesn't turn, then you got too much spring in the car. That 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 that's what tells you you have too much spring, because the car will just go straight. You're turning, but it's not turning. The, you're turning the wheel, but the car's still wanting to go straight. Or it, what you'll do is you'll start graining the tires really bad because what you're doing is you're scrubbing the tires across the track you're, the car's not turning you're just scrubbing them and you'll get the graining on the tires really fast and i all the tire times i checked the tires they were fine um now sometimes on the right front you get a little bit of stuff going on because it keeps like i said before it wants to lock up in that one turn um but that's about it well yeah you can counter that with the bump stops will limit the car so you could run the bump stops at zero or really low and that would counter it would lit it would limit okay let me see if i can explain this right if, if you do the bump stops that would solve some of it but what you're solving also causes more problems think about a spring a spring is very linear a spring when you're compressing the spring it's very linear. The, the 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 poundage of it is gradual, right? Because the spring is slowly compressing, right? A bump stop is nothing but 
some bushings that are different thicknesses and densities. So when it hits that, it's literally a stop. So it, there's no there's no linear to it at all. So like let's say you go up against the bump stop. When you go against the bump stop, it's dead stop. It's your it doesn't go from there. It, so if you were looking at a graph, it would go from nothing to straight up. It would spike like straight up. Okay. Where if you that's why I look on my MoTeC too because sometimes I see where the bump stop is actually interfering with the shock itself, and that's when I got to increase the bump stop range. Because what's happening is the bump stop is interfering with that graph. And I, usually I can tell on the graph when it, where it's doing it. Okay. Uh, it wasn't doing it on this one. So, but I'm just saying is, is if the, you get the bump stop rate and range, basically they're just bushings. So let's say you hit a bump. Let's say you hit a curbing. If you're already on the bump stop, you, that's when you lose the car. The car will unload. Because you have no give. There's there's no give there at all anymore. You're up against the bump stop, and that's when you the car will f turn around or you'll lose it. So if you, I'd rather have a spring do most of the load because it's linear. As it's the tire's moving, the spring's going up and down and moving. It's not just stop, like abrupt, like a bump stop is. Bump stops are good, but they're, you know, bump stops are really good. And they also make the car react faster. The tighter the bump stop you have, the faster the car reacts. So, like, it, so what I mean is that if you run at a zero or a, the lower the number of the bump stop, the faster the car is going to react. So when you do an input in the steering, it's going to react faster and faster the less bump stop you have in it as far as uh, the range. I mean, so if you have, like, a zero, yeah, as soon as you turn, the car is going to react because it's basically going to be right up against it. It's going to be right up against the bump stop. Okay, but again, if you're at a bumpy track, you don't want that. That's why, like, at a bumpy tracks like Olton Park or Emily, you're running the big range, you're running your soft, running lower bump stop rates, wide bump stop ranges, because the car, if you ran everything down to zero, it would be it would bounce you all over the place. Well, the curbs there at Paul Ricard are pretty bad, too. I mean, if you hit those, they can upset, upset the car pretty bad. You got to be able to run over these curbs and take them still without destroying your lap time. So that's why I don't want to run the bump. I mean, they're they're already a little on the tight side, but you don't want you know if you run them so tight that they're basically zero, the car is going to have no give at all. And you go you hit all those other curbs that run around Paul Ricard, and you're going to just you're going to lose time. So again, I hope I'm making I hope I'm making sense if I've. If I'm not, just tell me. I mean, I'll try to uh, make an example, but I mean, I'm hoping that uh, obviously, since I can't see anybody, I'm hoping that you know it's making sense. I mean, I like bump stops because they make the car feel a lot different in certain times. But again, a spring is better as far as um. Taking bumps and ride and going over curbs and things like that, it's a lot better than a bump stop because bump stops just aren't meant to give anything. They don't give it all. Um, let's do just a few laps with the Porsche here, the new one, and if we can see what. Now, you can see with this, you know, I don't have as much toe in it, but everything else is pretty similar to what the other Porsche was. Okay, now this is a little, again, I don't run as much. Of course, it's got TC1 and 2, but I don't run as much ABS in it because the car stays hooked up a little better. It's got more downforce on the front end of the car than the old Porsche. Um, mechanical, it's pretty much the same, about the same kind of setup. Um, little tighter bump stop ranges on the left side. I actually staggered the, the ranges uh, on this car instead of the other one. I ran them tighter on this left side because that's where all the force is in those really long right-hand corners. Now, and again, they're not down to zero. They're just lower. Um, 
shocks, again, a lot different. And of course, arrows different. Now again, I still got you know for the port. You know, I mean, obviously it's just as much, you know, it had a ten wing, but it had a lot more wing spots to go. I still got a lot of wing in this car, really. Um, but you see how the car, as far as sitting, is you know lower than the other car. You know, it's just the way this car is. And I'll show this setup too because I just done got this setup done a few days ago. I hope I explained it okay. I hope it makes sense. If, like I said, if it, if you have a question, you know, there's there's always a great thing for bump stops in certain times. You know, bump stops are really good. And sometimes I've run this, the left corner or the high load corner on the rear of the Porsche at zero. And there's times I've done that if I can get away with it um, because it makes the car very reactive and steady. But you just got to watch when you do it because it makes the car also very, uh, if it hits a bump, it makes it very unsettled if you hit a bad bump or bad curb. Well, this car just sounds like it's got screaming more RPM than the other car, but... I like the gears in this car better too. The ratios are just a little bit better than the other car. A little bit taller. Probably because the engine's bigger, probably. Thinking about it. And of course, a lot of times you think with a stiffer spring, the car's going to ride worse, but not all, not every time because if the stiffer spring keeps the car off the bump stops, it's not going to it's going to actually ride better because when you hit bumps, if it's on the bump stops, it's going to ride like there's no suspension. Again, it's just a trial and error type thing.
Okay, this car is, you know, to me, just way more balanced, better package. I mean, it should be. It's a, it's a newer gen car, and you can feel the difference. You really can feel the difference between this car and the 18. I mean, it just feels way more balanced. Speed is definitely better. look good pretty consistent we win more It goes over bumps good, it curves, it doesn't bother it. That ah, was my fault. I should have just drove it in there. Being too delicate with it. But what was the speed down the straightaway? One seventy four. So, and 
pretty solid going through there but this this is where the car really takes a load on this all that one side that looks really good it looks good going through there I don't see no smoke pouring off tires or anything like that I think this is a I think this is a solid really solid good you know I, I got this as a safe setup but it's it's really you can go from a lot of different directions with this but I think it's really good overall uh, I ran faster than that you know when I was practicing with it but I mean this should you know running like mid 54s to you know 54 fours to fives so I think is I think it was somewhere around there I think it was 54 fives um but yeah we got 24 six left front 25 uh nine right front 24 five left rear 25 one right right rear toes negative 0.1 on this with the camber at negative four on the left front negative 3.8 on the right front and the caster at 11.4 toe on the rear is a positive 0.1 with the camber at negative 3.5 on the left rear negative 3.2 on the right rear um now of course as you can see the spread and that's what a lot of times I look at. I look at this, you know, look at the spread, and it's, you know, I mean, I got it maxed out over here, um, but it's still, you know, it's it's really still a decent spread. And here, even though I don't have it as much, um, it's still got a decent spread. Of course, you get getting a little teeny bit of light graining, but I guarantee it's that dang right front wanting to lock up, uh, going around that right that right hander. So again, that's one of those things. That's why I run extra uh, ABS on it, but just something you got to really practice, or you can click this up one more. Um, but again, electronics three, three, and one. First fuel, three on the anti roll bar, fifty six on the brake bias, steering twelve, spring on the left front's one hundred seventy three thousand five hundred. It's maxed out. Right front's one hundred fifty five thousand. Bump stop rate 900. Bump stop range is 10 on the left front, 16 on the right front. And on the rear, the spring's 193,000 on the left rear and 187,000 on the right rear with a bump stop rate of 500. And a bump stop range of 10 on the left rear and 20 on the right rear with the anti roll bar of 3 and the preload 100. Shocks, they came in really, really good. Um, better than the 18 for some reason, but they, they came in really good. Um, they were one, two, four, and seven, and on the rear they're two, zero, five, and seven. So um, probably just because it's a newer car, um, you know, they got it working better maybe. Uh, but it, I don't know really know the the answer to that. But it just seems like they the uh, it, they tuned up better than the uh, eighteen arrow um, with this. Um, really. I'll probably go up one click in the front here um and that's because a lot of that some of those curbs especially that turn not turn one but turn two when you run over that curb and you're taking the right hander to go down a little short shoot and you don't want it to get messed up and get you all crossed up there because then you it happened to me and if you get the car upset you lose a lot of time so i think a lot of that is just the car hitting stuff so again, you know, you got 54 in the front, 60 in the rear with an eight wing and a three and a three in the brake ducts. Um, you can go up one if you want, but it really doesn't need it. Um, other than that, I mean, again, this is really more of a safe type setup. You can go a lot from here. Uh, you can go down one on the wing if you want. I've tried that. It, it seemed pretty good too. Uh, I didn't really gain anything speed wise, not less than a mile an hour. So it didn't really, uh, it was still like 174. So I didn't really uh see a gain so i just put it up at eight and tuned it to that um but other than that it's a really good setup i think it's a really good base setup and again i'll leave a link to this setup also in the description um so i'll leave a setup to this uh to this car and you know in the 2018 both 
And again, the port, you know, again, it's, you know, it's a few miles an hour faster than the 18, but it should be. It's, you know, bigger engine, newer car, uh, newer gen car. Um, you know, it's just technology, just things that, you know, it should be fast. I mean, I hope it, they're doing something wrong if it's slower, that's for sure. Um, so to me, I, it's just a better overall car to but drive, I think, than the 18. But, you know, the 18 is still a fun car to drive. It's not like it's a... It's a terrible car to drive. I mean, to me, it drives a lot of like the Porsche Cup car, uh, just better than the Porsche Cup car because I don't think the Porsche Cup car drives that great. But I the this car, the 18, just drives a lot better than that. But it's on that same kind of level. But um, again, I know that he was asking for a setup for the 18. And I know the 18s don't get too much love, you know, whether no matter the make, no matter if it's the BMW or the or whatever, it doesn't really make a difference because I mean, you know, they're the older cars, and obviously it's like you know, the M6 is going to be slower than the M4. I mean, as far as lap time, maybe not in overall speed, but in lap time, and you know, it's the same thing with all the cars, really, the Ferrari, the you know, really the Lamborghini is the same car. Um, but that's what's so weird is you see the Lamborghini, like I said, to 2018, it does like 178 miles an hour or something like that. And that's the 2018 Huracan. Well, I just ran the Evo 2 this last weekend. I could barely get it to do 174. So, I mean, it's not near as fast because it's got way more downforce on the car than the other Lambr than the original Huracan. It's got way more downforce. So again, you know, it handles better, but also um, it doesn't have the speed down the straightaway. So they had to sacrifice something. So that's just the way it goes. That's just the way the manufacturer goes. And so it makes it interesting, makes it fun, makes it interesting. Uh, trying to get the car to do, you know, what it, you know, what it, uh, what it can do. Um, you know, it all depends on the each each car. Just like John in here, uh, that was in here. On the stream, he had a race in the Nissan GTR. He was running the Wing Max this last weekend here at Paul Ricard, which I don't doubt because the car only has like four adjustments on the wing, and it's got so much power. He was still smoking, smoking my Huracan going down the straightaway, even with the Max wing, and I don't have hardly any wing. So, I mean, there, you know, there you go. You know, it, it's it's just every car is different, and you got to go to what the car. Uh, reacts to and how it you know you, you know how it drives how it reacts the performance of it and that's what you just got to adjust the car to get the maximum out of that that particular package but again this is just a short stream today a uh, couple hours and again I wanted to get these done and get these out for anybody that's interested in the setups and also put out there that I will be doing a GT2 race on Friday. If anybody's interested to watch, I will be streaming that um, at uh, like 1.30 in the afternoon on Friday. So I hope you come and come and join me for that. And let's have a race uh, with the GT2 cars uh, in the league and the seniors. And of course, then I'll have another race on Saturday also. And they are at COTA this week. So we're going to be at Coda, a track that I have not been at in a while. So it's kind of interesting. I like I like Coda, um, and of course it's even better because we haven't I haven't been there in a while in a long time. So it'll be hopefully have, hopefully I have some good racing, and I hope you come and join uh, join my stream on Friday and Saturday. And I hope you you all have a great uh, rest of the week, and we'll see you then. Y'all take care.